All right, uh, Doc's in Wellness Wednesday. What's what's going on? Well, today I wanted to talk about the most important element to life itself, and and this is the one thing that will vitalize our bodies more than any other element on Earth, and that is oxygen. You know, oxygen is critical to every, virtually every cellular function that we have. So you can live a few weeks without food, a few days without water, and only a few minutes without oxygen. And the problem with that is that most of us are walking around oxygen deprived on most days. Um, literally 90% of our life energy depends on oxygen. But most people are oxygen deprived in society today. You know, we're hunched over our computers and phones. We're compressing our chest cavity, pressing down on our diaphragm and lungs. We have toxic overload that eats oxygen up out of our bodies. Our air is lower in oxygen than it once was. And we breathe shallower than we should. And also stress causes our chest to constrict. So we only breathe with the top portion of our lungs. Not to mention smoking and alcohol figuring into the equation. All of these things cause us not to get the oxygen to our bodies that we need to feel good. Well, aren't you just a, a ball <laughs> well, think of about happiness it. this so morning? I, I, want everybody to, to, I, I want everybody to do something for me today. As you're sitting on your computer and or you're sitting at your desk working, pay attention to how much of your lungs you're actually using. You're probably using the top half, if even how that. How do you know? Maybe even the top one third. No, cousin, you got. How do you know? How do? How can you tell how much of your lungs you're using? Well, think about it. If you're if you're breathing in and out, but you could breathe deeper than what you're breathing, then you're only using the top part of your lungs. You're only using a small portion of your lungs, and so all of oh, these things has. How that works? Okay. Yeah, all of these <laughs> all of these things had have led most people to be oxygen deprived, um, and so. Well, the, you're. I mean, wait a minute. Wait, we we have to uh, talk about this for a minute. Okay. So, I was just hunched. I was kind of hunched over, yeah. right, like this, right. Ta- looking at you, talk on the radio, right. And I was just breathing like shallow, shallow, like this, right. Okay. Now, <clears throat> okay. So I'm breathing like this. Okay. All right. So I can get a whole lot more in, right, if I want to, right. So you're saying, what are you saying? I like. I could. I could go. I could go. No, I, I'm full up now. Right. Is and that how I should breathe every time I breathe? Well, no, it's not. But this just staying hunched over on our, our computers and our desks and our phones leads us to shallow breathe almost all the time. All the time. Right. And that leads to a slightly oxygen deprived state in our bodies. And we get enough to survive, but our bodies many times don't doesn't get enough oxygen to thrive. And there's a big difference between the two. So you're making Wait. everything work harder than it should have to work? Exactly. That- Wait, that so, should be a bumper sticker. Don't just thrive. No, no. Don't <laughs> just survive. Thrive. There you go. And so when we're oxygen deficient, our immune system is much less efficient, leading to more sicknesses and disease. Our brain function slows dramatically. We become less efficient. Thinking is foggy. Our mood can turn irritable. Our digestion cannot function properly. It puts more uh, hard work on our cardiovascular system, on our heart and our lungs. Um, You can feel weaker. You can become easily fatigued. Your muscular system won't work as well. Literally, every body system will be less efficient. Now, it's not going to, I mean, you're not going to fall over and pass out, but everything's going to have to be, everything's going to work less efficiently than what it could if we were at a higher oxygen state. Is it almost like having an air conditioning unit and the outside unit is, uh, is it's working, it's cooling your house, but the outside unit is all clogged up with dirt and goop, the little fins, the little, what you call them? Yeah. The grills. It, it is like And that so it has to work harder. So, you're, so your body's having to do basically the same thing because you're not giving it enough oxygen. Correct. And especially, uh, you, 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 you might get enough oxygen to be okay, But you're not getting enough oxygen to fully heal yourself and to give your body all of the vitality and energy that it needs. And so all of this leaves our systems very vulnerable to chronic disease. Major diseases can attack our body much easier. And you will certainly, if nothing else, you will not feel your best. You'll be tired. 
Um, you, you'll feel bad most of the time. You'll yawn frequently. You know, yawning is your body needing more oxygen. Yeah, so yeah. your body's drawing in more oxygen and kind of like when you're in a, in a tired, whenever you're tired. But being slightly deoxygenated is something that causes most of us not to feel our very best. So, the Boy, tr- that's something we can change like that. Absolutely. So the truth is getting your body fully oxygenated is about the easiest thing you can do to feel better. <laughs> um, have more energy, improve your vitality, and to keep you healthy. So um, I have some really easy ways that you can oxygenate your body that we're going to go through after the break. I'm going to go over three or four ways that you can put more life-giving oxygen into your cells and feel better and have more energy and not be tired and foggy brained and ran down all the time and oxygenating your body will do all those things well i mean just think about it when somebody gets hurt the first thing an emt will do is put that mask over your face absolutely that's the first thing they do is give you oxygen first thing because oxygen heals and helps almost everything yeah so it doesn't matter what the trauma what the disease what the injury what's wrong with you oxygen helps it heal and so we can actually do this for ourselves didn't Michael in, Jackson in sleep in an oxy- oxygenated chamber? I think he might have. Something like yeah. that? There there's a lot of claims to that, that it, it, oxygen can can really fix stuff. Yeah, and and it's true, too. Well, remember when those really oxygen fixed. bars were like the rage? Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're coming back? Yep, after the break. Okay. I'm going to give you some ways now that you can oxygenate your body much better to promote healing and vitality. Now, like we were talking about before the break, the first thing that people think of when they think of oxygen is they see a, they see people being rolled into the emergency room, they put the oxygen mask o- yep. over their face. Mm-hmm. And the reason that they do that is because that oxygen, whatever condition they have, it doesn't matter, will help them heal. What it, it will help them survive, it will help them get through it. Um, but using a tank and a mask is bulky, expensive, and it can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so strike it, a match by one. Watch yeah, exactly. Trip. Boom. Yeah. Like you'll, you'll see the, the, the people smoking with the oxygen mask in their nose and they're not supposed to be. Yeah, that's very, very oh dangerous. My God, that's so dangerous. Yeah. And so it's also really impractical. So there's also a machine called an oxygen concentrator. And what this is, is it takes air from the room, regular air. There's no tank. It takes air from the room and it brings it into the machine and it concentrates the oxygen. And then you can breathe that through a mask and um, that's very very good for helping almost any trauma any injury almost anything heal but now how Um, long would you have to do that to gain any benefit um just maybe three days a week something like that you know for 20 30 minutes at a time you know any as long as you super oxygenate those cells you're going to get a pretty good effect out of it um, and we're, we actually have two of the oxygen concentrator machines coming, and I think they've been delivered. We haven't even unpacked them yet, so I'm not quite ready to talk about that part of it. But we, this is an amazing new technology. So for you the area. really believe in this? Yes, oxygen concentrators are really a neat thing. So it doesn't matter what the patient comes in with; it's going to improve their healing times. So if you expect them to heal, you know, in four weeks, they might heal in two weeks. Yeah. If you're yeah. if you're if you're oxygenating the body to to a real high extent. Um, so we'll have more on that later. Now, another great way to oxygenate your body is is something called a hyperbaric chamber. I, I'm sure most people have heard of that by now. That that isn't that maybe that's what Michael Jackson had. I think it was. Yeah, that's Might what he had. So what that is is it, it it doesn't increase the oxygen, but it increases the pressure inside there. And so you lay in this big tube that's sealed, and it pressurizes it a lot like what um, like what a scuba diver would would, would would have. Yeah. And what that does is it forces the oxygen into your body at a higher rate. And so hyperbaric chambers are great. And this is another thing we're looking into right now is 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 hyperbarics. Um, but you know what? Here's two really simple ways to get more oxygen in your body. <laughs> Number one Breathe. is drink more water. First of all, oh wait, wait. water is H two O. That oxygen cleaves off and is is it gets in your body just just like breathing does. Okay. So drink more water. Everyone should drink half their body weight in ounces of water a day. So a two hundred pound person should drink a hundred ounces of water a day. Really? Yes. And that will help oxygenate your body, flush out your cells, flush out your toxins. So so that's wait. So that's one. how so that's how it works. You take your your body weight and divide it by two. Yes. 
half your body weight in ounces of water a day. Okay. So a 200-pound person should drink 100 ounces of water a Ooh, day. Ooh, that's a lot of water, Doc. Well, not really. I mean, if you think about it, it's only five 20-ounce bottles. It's not not really that much, you know. That's um, true. Yeah, if you think about it that way, if you break it down, drink one in the morning and then, you know, one with breakfast, one with lunch. Yeah. It's not that bad. Yeah. Does that mean actually drinking water? Because don't you get water from food as you, well? You do, but you, as far as the amount of water you should drink, you should probably try to get that okay. in, you know, half your body weight. And by now, the way, vodka, just because it's clear, it's you, That's it what I was going to say. By the way, water is not uh, <laughs> vodka, tea, beer, uh, whiskey, yeah. any of that. Water. Of that, water. Yeah, okay. none of that counts. <laughs> um, now, here is the simplest thing you can do to get more oxygen in your body. Breathe deeper, all right? Uh, breathe fuller. And also get some exercise. You know, one of the biggest benefits of exercise is not the physical motion. It's the breathing it from it. makes you breathe. Yeah, absolutely. It makes us breathe mm. deep. And it oxygenates your body. That's one of the main benefits of it. But if you're not able to exercise or you don't have, quote, unquote, time to exercise, um, you can also do some breathing exercises several times a day. You can do these right at your desk. So if we have time, I wanted to tell everybody how to do that real fast. Sure. Yes. So what you're going to do is you're going to sit up straight. You're going to put your Okay, hand- wait, wait. Deb and I are going to do it. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So you're going to sit up straight, and you're going to first exhale as far as you can through your mouth, and then you're going to place your hands on your stomach just above your waist. Okay. Now, you're going to breathe in slowly through your nose, pushing your hands out with your stomach. So your stomach should expand, like you're filling your 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 air up from the bottom up to the top, like you're like you're blowing up a balloon. Wait, I have to breathe because I was about to die. <laughs> okay, what now? What the hell? What? <laughs> okay, so it's real simple. Put your hands on your stomach. Okay. And as you breathe in through your nose, push your stomach out into your hands. So in other words, you use your stomach expansion to pull air into your body. You got it, Dem. There's nothing hard about that. Now. This ensures that you're breathing very deeply. and you're, So it's like you're filling your body up with air. Now, hold your breath for a count of two to five. And then slowly and steadily breathe out through your mouth, feeling your hands move back and letting your stomach, letting your stomach relax in. That's like yoga breathing. Kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, we'll, okay. Until most of the air is out. And then you repeat and then repeat again. So and basically, sit up straight and breathe deeper. Yes. That's the bottom line. So you're saying just do this as an exercise at your desk. You yes. don't have to breathe like this all day. No, of course not. Okay. Do this once every hour. Okay. For and, how long? Uh, maybe six to ten breaths. Okay. I mean, it's not. It, you know, it really just depends. But six to ten breaths is going to be enough to keep your body oxygenated. You're not going to be foggy-brained and tired and ran down and... You know, it feels so much better. You know, someone said, I read a report a while back, and it said that um, to, uh, breathing, like you just uh, described, resets the brain. Yeah. It'll reset your brain. I was Absolutely. thinking the same thing, because just taking your mind off of something and focusing on breathing probably helps clear your mind, too. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So I was actually doing these on the way over here. Um just to improve my energy and improve my you know brain function, get things sharper, smoother. I mean, I, you know, I do this often. So these are really good for you. But the bottom line is there's a, an amazing healing potential of oxygenating your body. And I want to let everybody know that most people are deoxygenated because, you know, we're slumped over our desks or we're slumped over the steering wheel, breathing shallow, compressing our chest cavity, um, only using half of our lung capacity, probably a hundred, almost 100% of the time. Um, and you can sit up straight and do these breathing exercises and you will feel better. You'll, your body will have more oxygen. Your brain will be clearer. Your body will function better. You know, the tiredness and the fatigue and all that will go away just by simply breathing deeper and breathing better. So you can do this little simple breathing exercise. There are several other ways you can do deep breathing exercises. Um, I have three or four of them. And if I get time, I'll post them on our Facebook page so that you can find maybe the one that works better for you. Like a demonstration? Yeah, like cool. a demonstration type thing. And if I have time today, I'll you know post what those I think, on there. No, you know, honest to God, you know what I think you should put up on your Facebook page? What's and I that? think it would get a lot of hits. I think people would go and watch it. Um, get you a spoon, a spoon, one of those, you know, a spoon. Uh-huh. What, do you, uh, what are spoons made Utensil? of? Utensil? What are spoons Was- made of? Stainless steel. Stainless steel. Do you yeah. know from the house? A spoon. Uh-huh. And I think you should play your abs. 
Uh, no, I think no, I think I think people will go watch that. If you played your stomach. They would. No, if yeah. you played your stomach, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that would be good for business. Uh-huh. Now, I do I do have a question. Do you sometimes I mean you come in here and you talk about eating healthy and exercising and breathing better. Do you sometimes struggle with those things? Or can you make the rest of us feel a little better is what I'm asking. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it is. And, and you know, uh, it, of course, everybody struggles. He can't even things. answer the question. <laughs> I know. Here's, here's what I would say about that, though, is that that's, that works a lot like a muscle does. Like the more you exercise it, the mm-hmm. easier it gets. Like people that first start going through my program struggle with it, but as they tell themselves, "No, I'm not, I don't eat that. No, I don't, I don't. You know, I'm no, I don't drink that." It becomes easy. That is great advice. It's like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. Wow. So, like, you know, I used to struggle, especially like with um, pastries and donuts. You know, was during Christmas. I mean, our patients bring us tables of course, full of stuff, yeah. and so um, the, it just doesn't even phase me now, just because I'm so used to it yeah. that that's that's not. You know, my mind doesn't go there. Yeah. And you can walk by a chocolate donut. I can. Yeah. Oh. And not even think about it. And I used to at least look at it three times. That's, so <laughs> that, is, yeah. that is power. It is. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's true. The more you exercise discipline in taking care of your body, the easier it gets. And it just becomes more and more part of you. Um, the people that are successful, though, like we were talking about this on break, are the ones that have just had it. Who are, you know, you can't be iffy or it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to be, you, the patients that come in and sit down with me and they're pounding on my desk going, I'll do whatever you tell me I have to do. I have to have change. That's the ones that are successful. Mm-hmm. The ones that are like, I'm going to try. I might try. Oh, I might try yeah. this for a little while. I, I just say, no, you're not mm-hmm. ready. You know, you you have to be willing. The example, ready. the example mm-hmm. I use all the time is people who want to quit smoking. They get that patch. They end up smoking with the patch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got when you, if you if you want to stop like smoke, for instance, smoking. Mm-hmm. It, the, it, the people in my in my uh, circle of friends, the people who have been successful are the ones that wake up one morning and just throw them in the trash and mm-hmm. say, "I'm done. I'm right. not doing that anymore." Yeah. And you know, self so, uh, having having watching your self talk, the way you talk uh, to yourself and about yourself. I had shows on this before. Is so important. You know, if you tell yourself, well, I'm going to try to lose weight, you're going to get more try. You're not mm-hmm. going to get weight loss. Mm-hmm. You know, you say, I am going to lose weight. I can reach my ideal weight. Um, and so waking up, telling yourself every morning, oh, I'm, you know, I'm tired today. I'm so overweight. I'll never lose weight. This is not for me. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> you're going to get more of that. Mm-hmm. So negative self-talk is something that we all could get better at and, and always tell yourself positive, encouraging thoughts. And when you have a negative thought, get rid of it. Yeah. Don't Look let, for don't, ways to succeed instead of ways to fail. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. See the result. That's it. See the gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Wow. That's it. Good show today, Doc. Well, thank you. Teaching us all how to breathe. Yeah, <laughs> it seems so simple. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but breathe deeper, you'll feel better. All right, Good thank tip. you, Doc. All right, thanks, Dr. guys. Kevin, Ryan Wellness Institutes. It is eight thirty-five.